Hello and welcome to my lab. I think today we ought to do something a bit more silly, like making a sugar rocket launcher. If you don't know what sugar rockets are, they're basically easy homemade rockets, like bottle rockets, but a bit bigger. There are videos about sugar rockets all over the place, so we won't be focusing on how to make them here. Instead, we are going to work on an electronic ignition source. And because this is a very easy project, I think this is a good opportunity for me to take you along and show you how I usually go about designing things quickly. Of course, the first thing is always to figure out what parts you have available and what parts you might have to make. This system is going to be pretty simple, so we don't need a whole lot. The main thing we need is a nice switch. So all I did was Google trigger switch, and guess what? You can find all kinds of trigger switches. This is some sort of Makita tool trigger switch, and it was just 10 bucks on Amazon. It's got a really nice click to it, as you can hear, I'm sure. And this has a nice heavy contactor for us. As you can see, I've already been doing some experiments with it, and it should definitely be able to carry the current that we need to light these things. For the power source, I'll just be using this LiPo battery. I keep several small LiPo batteries around because they're very handy. Um, this thing is going to give us way more power than we need to start this, so this should work quite well. And also I find really handy just to keep a, just a whole plethora of different sizes of resistance wire. Some of this is canthal and some of this is uh, nichrome wire, but uh, I make all kinds of resistors based on these. So the basic concept is going to be that uh, we'll have a power source and a switch, and that power source is going to run all kinds of current through a resistor which will heat up until it gets red hot, and hopefully that will light our sugar rocket fuel. So that means we'll have to design some 3D printed parts to put this all together, and we also have to test to make sure that I can indeed light the sugar rocket fuel using the nichrome wire. So first, let's start designing the trigger mechanism. When I'm designing things in CAD, I like to keep all the relevant parts beside me on the table while I'm thinking things through. And of course, the calipers are very important as well for measuring the different features on everything. That way we can integrate those into our CAD drawing. So let's go ahead and jump into Onshape and start working things out. Most of the work we do in Onshape is going to be about making sketches and then extruding that into geometry. There are quite a few tutorials on the specifics of how to use each individual tool. So here I'm going to focus on my process of linking these tools together to actually make something. Now first I want to make a quick little markup of the trigger so that we can use that as a reference later when we're making the grip. So I'm going to start with the mounting point of the trigger. So you can see here I'm building this tab with holes in it. Now you'll notice that I can generate generic lines and circles and then I can constrain them. Anything drawn in blue is considered to be unconstrained, and anything in black is constrained. So all throughout this, you'll notice me defining lengths and different relationships between the objects here. And it really comes down to playing with it a lot to get used to how different things work. So you'll see me here quickly sketching out the rough bounding box or so of the trigger. And I'm getting all the measurements here with the calipers beside me. I'll show you exactly how we're going to use this later once we make the base of the grip. Before we do that though, I'm going to make a model of the tube that the grip will attach to. So I'll make a quick circle sketch and extrude it into a cylinder. An important thing to note when making sketches is that we can reference geometry in other parts. You'll notice me doing this fairly often. Here I will be referencing the back of the cylinder, and you'll see even after I hide the part, you can still see the line there. And the nice thing is that if I change that cylinder later, that reference will change with it. We'll make the grip out of a block and then use what's called a Boolean operation to subtract the cylinder geometry from the block. And this gives us a sort of half pipe type thing.
Now I plan on attaching the grip with a couple of zip ties. And these zip ties are actually going to go internal to the grip and reach all the way around. So I'm going to cut some holes circularly inside the grip. And to do that, we can create this sketch here and use what's called a revolve. Instead of adding geometry, we can cut or subtract geometry in a way. And that's what we're doing here. So now you'll see these tunnels go all the way through circularly. And you'll see later that zip ties will go from those all the way around the tube to secure the whole grip. So now let's make the handle. I'm going to make the base geometry here. And then I'm going to create a guide. And then use a sweep operation that uses that guide to make a nice curved handle. And that should fit the hand quite nicely. Now here's where we're gonna need that quick SketchUp model of the trigger. We have the base geometry of the grip, but we need to know exactly where that trigger is going to be. So I'm going to create what's called a mate connector. This is going to just define a spot that we can attach the trigger to later. In an assembly tab, we can import the grip and then import the trigger and attach the trigger to the mate connector that I've created for the grip. Now you can see here it's way too low, so now I go back and shorten the length of that sketch I created earlier. Now you can see the trigger is nice and high like we'd like it. And here comes a bit of a more freeform iterative process. We're just going to start cutting out pieces of the geometry until there's a nice little cavity for the trigger to fit into. So here you'll see me using the extrude function to remove a lot of geometry as opposed to adding it. Here you'll notice I'm actually creating a new part and modifying it, but then I'm going to later just use the Boolean operation to subtract it. And that allows me to do a little bit more. I'm uh, using a chamfer here to make sure that it doesn't cut all the way through the grip. Now I'm going to create a slot that's just the right size to fit the mounting point of the trigger. This is the important part because if this doesn't come together nicely, it's not going to hold the trigger in place and that would make the trigger sloppy. Now I'm going to create a plane that will conveniently cut the part in half. This is going to allow us to assemble it and facilitate the printing process. Now that the part has been cut in twain, I'm going to define the screw holes. And I'm just going to use some plastic screws that I got from McMaster Car. To make the holes, we'll need to make a sketch and define points on that sketch, then use the hole tool. After that, it's all about finagling the settings until you get just the right hole that you need. Once I'm happy with that, it's time to move on to create the cavity for the wiring. Now it's ready to print, so we'll just export it and do so. So here they are printed, and as you can see, it's uh, exactly as we defined it. But uh, as is usual when you're quickly designing something, it doesn't quite fit. So there's a little bit of mismatch here, and we need more clearance up top. So it's almost in there, but you uh, can't really pull the trigger. And I uh, did try putting this together. It does just bind up, so that's no good at all. So what I've done is I went ahead and redesigned just a little bit and reprinted. 
So here you can see I've given uh, quite a bit more room up here just by changing that to be an arc. And now that fits quite nicely. And you can see on the other side there was a little, a little piece here that was just colliding with a little piece on this side. And you'll, you'll end up with that kind of stuff and you can just keep redesigning things until everything works out. So there we go, it just clicks just nicely. So we'll go ahead and put that together. There we go, and that's a pretty good fit. It clicks nice and freely, feels good in the hand, and you can see here it fits nice with the PVC tube. Of course, I'm gonna have to pull it back apart again to uh, get the wires in there, but now we know it all fits. So let's talk about the circuit here. We're gonna want the battery somewhere just on the outside just uh, zip tied to the, the PVC or something. And then uh, the electrons are going to need to go from this connector into another connector that we'll have to, we'll have to solder up in through the back side of this grip here, in through the trigger and back out. Then with this wire here, it's gonna go all the way to the back end of the uh, PVC to light the bottle rocket. And of course, because we have to make it a circuit, we'll come all the way back and connect to the battery again. Okay, so here I've made some of our sugar rocket fuel. I'll set that over there carefully. And here I've got the test rig we're gonna use. Set that over there. Just got uh, a battery connection, the trigger, and here we've got the resistance wire. Now what's happening here is we're going to be running current through this and we want to generate a lot of heat. The wire itself is going to be able to dissipate a certain wattage of heat at a certain temperature. We want this thing to get hot enough that it can light the uh, fuel, but not too hot that it melts. The wire is also going to have a certain resistance per length. So there's a little bit of finagling uh, to get this thing to conduct enough wattage of electricity while also not burning itself up. I've done a couple of tests already, so I think this length of wire should suffice. And the concept is once, you know, if this works, uh, this section of wire here, it'll take a little bit more forming, but this will go up the tail end of the rocket. And as soon as you pull this trigger, this thing's gonna get hot real quick and uh, light off the rocket. So let's uh, see how this behaves with the rocket fuel. I'm going to put a little bit down and then uh, stick this in it and pull the trigger and we'll see how that goes. So here's our test amount and I'm gonna take this and put it far away because we don't want that to catch on fire. And now I'm going to uh, arm our ignition system by just plugging it in. And now we'll have to stand back and be a bit careful. And there we go, that worked quite well. I definitely noticed, let me unplug this really quick. There. I definitely noticed that uh, the wire didn't even really get red hot, which is nice because it gets red hot way before it gets too hot such that it melts. So this individual igniter should be, a, should be able to be at least a semi-permanent part of the launcher. So we should be able to just add a new rocket to the tube, shove this right up in there, light it, and then it'll just fly out, hopefully. So now that we know that's gonna work, we can go ahead and make a more permanent setup here. But just for kicks, let's watch it one more time in slow motion.
Okay, let's get back to work. And with a quick paint job, it's showtime. Introducing the new 1000 series rocket launcher from Bowers Lab. With our all new ignition system, loading the rocket is as easy as one, two, three. With one pull of the trigger, you can launch a rocket and look good doing it. Okay, we're about ready for our test here. Uh, Battery is hooked up, but not plugged in, because that's the closest thing we have to a safety on this device. And uh, also wearing gloves, and I'm gonna have this face shield, because I don't want hot calcium carbonate in my face. That's not, not desirable. So let's get in position, and uh, we'll just take the shot. That works uh, pretty well. Even, uh, looks like these will be multiple use. They look a little bit worse for wear, but those are gonna stand at least uh, double digits of rockets should, should anyway. Uh, they're a bit big for here, so we're probably gonna let that be that until we find a bigger place to shoot them off. Uh, we can't shoot them accurately right now because they're just completely out of balance, so we'll have to design something possibly around that to make them fly straight. Uh, but it's, in terms of the launcher itself, it works really well, so I'm quite pleased with that. And uh, with that, we'll see you next time.